Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the Book of Job, chapter 34. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear, me, hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasteth meat. Taste, tasteth meat. Let us cho choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity, and walked, walketh with wicked men? For he hath said, It profiteth a man nothing, that he should delight himself with God. Therefore hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. For be it from God, that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty, that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. Who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. If now thou hast understanding, hear this. Hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth himself, hateth right govern? And wilt thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit to say to a king, Thou art wicked, and to princes ye are ungodly? How much less to him that accepteth not the person of princes, nor regardeth the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment they shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For his eyes are upon the eyes of uh, the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works and he overturneth them in the night so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him and would not consider any of his ways, so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. When he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only, that the hypocrite reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to thy mind, he will recompense it, whether thou refuse, or whether thou choose, and not I. Therefore speak that what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Job hath spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. For he addeth rebellion unto his sin. He clappeth his hands among us, and multiplieth his words against God.
very powerful stuff. And um, actually, unfortunately, the end of the chapter is clearly quite strange because it appears that Elihu is also most certainly not Job's friend. Where he says that my desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wick wicked men. I need to understand um, what exactly is happening in Job. Yeah, Elihu is denouncing Job. And additionally, I, I, I think that um, from the way that Elihu does denounce Job, I don't think that. I mentioned in yesterday's video, like, the perspective of... Actually, it's, it's not really... It's not a point worth making now. Anyways, um, so the idea is I don't think that... Yeah, Elihu is saying that Job's multiplied sins are, you know... You know, was part of the reason he's struggling, and obviously Elihu was wrong. And I actually thought this is, this was um, strange because you see in Job, because when Elihu says in Job thirty three four, the spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life, it seems like Elihu is going to be a good person, but it turns out that Elihu, actually also, um. Is, is not a believer in Job, in that he thinks that all of this is happening to Job because Job is, is, is sinning, but actually Job is not sinning. And so that's why I think that that's very strange because of the fact that, no, he's actually not sinning. So that's why that's why I thought it was a little bit... Um, Excuse me, a long chapter. So I wanted to get an understanding of this verse here within this. Um, So this is a very um, powerful verse here. We'll read. We'll read the understanding of Job thirty-three fourteen. We'll, we'll start with um, thirty-three thirteen. Who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the old? old um, the... Sorry. Let's actually let's actually read from thirty-four ten to get a better understanding. It, it reads here. Uh, Therefore, hearken unto me, ye men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. So he's saying that God will not pervert judgment. Now reading about the verse that, um, that I mentioned here, where it says, Who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world, if he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. So the idea being that God, so Elihu is is complimenting God, right? So that's like this is why you know taking the time to understand the chapter is so important because Elihu is actually praising God. God he's basically saying that God, if he wanted to, could call back his spirit. Of course, my interpretation that if Jehovah wanted, he can like he can. He can guide me not to be like, you know, part of this world of men. And if you recall, remember Moses saying, would to, he says to, to Joshua, the son of Nun, um, envious thou thus for my sake, would to God that he, he would put his spirit in all his people, saying to Joshua that it would be great if more of his people were worthy of, of that relationship with the spirit of being empowered um, by the spirit of God, um, which, which happened only to a few people in the Old Testament. Uh, until the time of Jesus, and now I'm here on my my own mission you know, of naranjalism, um, you know, fulfilling the, the scriptures, of course, in in John 14 through 16, um, by way of the creation of my faith, um, naranjalism. So, of course, one of the re the verses I want to talk about here, in um, come on, uh, here in Genesis 6 3, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So the takeaway here being that God's Spirit, my, my interpretation, Lord Naren White, will not always strive with man. And then you see here the, the words from Elihu, which echo that idea 
Elihu, where he says, who, um, who hath given him a charge over the earth, or who hath disposed the whole world? If he set his heart upon man, so if God had decided it, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, so if God keeps the spirit, so he said he's going to, God will keep Lord Naren White for himself, so that the, you know, the Trinity will be together. And then he says, and, and so he'll keep Lord Naren White, he'll keep the spirit, he'll keep the breath of life. Right? So that the idea being that God says, even with, like, God, the spirit will not be with man. Then it says, yet his days shall be. So, again, the idea being that previously to this, like the men who were, if you think about it, one of the reasons why I talk about my sons will live for a thousand years is because they are my children. They are the son of the spirit. They are the sons of God. Come again. So from the time of the antediluvian patriarchs before the flood. Why? Because these men had some kind of empowerment that, or, or, or differences in, you know, physically, whatever it was, whatever it was. Um, in terms of, I've, I of course have written um, my uh, scriptures um, in the Old Testament, whatever it was. I don't know what it is specifically. But what I know is for a fact, as per what the Bible says, those, these men lived almost a thousand years and man of today lives 70 to 80 years on average. Like King David says, 80 years for the strong. He says that in Psalms. So the idea being, if we look at what God says, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that also is flesh. Okay, we got that. So Lord Naren White will not always strive with man. But then it says, yet his day shall be 120 years. So even without God's spirit, the life is 120 years. That's why when, when I talk about my children, I talk about men of level three. As I, tell, I say that they will be like Adam in my gospel. Because what it will be is um, they will be men who are blessed to live uh, a long time. Uh, and because they will not only potentially be different, I believe, in, in, in whatever way, um, based upon the these uh, like seven levels of male understanding. For example, like Jacob being smooth and Esau being hairy, whatever. That's just between four and five. But then also the idea that, you know, perhaps um, the, the empowerment of the spirit is another thing that is catapulting these men to having longer lives. And that's why when we return now to Elihu's words, here, he's actually complimenting God. He's saying... If God was determined, he could keep his spirit, he could keep his breath, and then all flesh shall perish together and man shall turn again unto dust, just like God did during the flood. Because when, when, when God, you know, when God flooded the world, all flesh perished. All flesh. From the, from the fowls of the air. All, remember, for everything, everything. Because Noah creates his ark and takes one animal, male and female of each species, to repopulate the earth. And so um, all flesh perished. And that's what um, Elihu was saying here. And he then goes on to say that, to imply that this is happening to Job because of his own sin, which is um, quite painful for Job. And with that, I want to go ahead now and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diet video. Since yesterday's Daily Diet video, I worked my software developer job. I created my Daily Diet, and I've created this Daily Diet video for 6 8, 23 and with no further achievements since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.